Hi, and welcome to our video series. We're very excited to tell you about the newest finishing tool on the market we call the Coper. The Coper is a tool used for installing baseboard. It helps you to quickly cut those difficult inside corners and allows you to match up even the most intricate profiles in seconds. Anyone who has ever installed baseboard knows that the best way to create a good fit in every corner is to use the coping method. For hundreds of years, master carpenters have used hand coping saws to cope the edge of a baseboard to create great looking corners. But for many carpenters, the coping method is just too time consuming or too difficult. And so they settle for 45 degree corners, which rarely fit well and certainly don't look very professional. Well now our company, the Cobra Corporation, is pleased to introduce a new finishing tool that uses your router to put perfectly coped edges on all styles of baseboard. It says goodbye to those 45 degree corners and allows everyone, from the master carpenter to the Saturday morning handyman, to create perfectly coped corners every time they use it. And every cut will only take you seconds. In this series of videos, I'll tell you how the coper works and show you some of the secrets to using it like a professional. We want to make sure that the coper cuts corners for you. Most finishing carpenters use a hand coping saw to cope baseboard. They start by using a chop saw to cut a 45 degree angle on the board so they can see the profile of the baseboard. Then they use a coping saw to follow that edge to create a coped edge. The coper takes that idea and simplifies it by using a template and a router. It can save you hours of frustration on every job while greatly improving the quality of your work. And the best news is that you don't have to be a master carpenter to use it. Let me give you a brief overview of how the coper works. The first thing you do is take a one inch piece of the baseboard you're using. Put a little wax on it and place it in the molding tray. Right behind it you place a small relief block. Its purpose I'll explain later. But once you place it there, you're ready to make a template of your baseboard. To do that, you mix together the two parts, A and B, of the poracast chemical included in your kit. You gently mix it together for 20 to 30 seconds and you pour it into the molding tray. Two minutes later it turns white and sets up. In about 15 minutes, you have a plastic template ready to use, which obviously is an exact match to the profile of your baseboard. You take the template and you screw it down into the coper. Then you take a piece of the baseboard that you need the coped edge on, it can be any length, and you clamp it into place. Run the router over the template and you have your coped edge. It's that easy to create a perfectly coped corner every time you use the coper. Now that I've given you an overview of how the coper works, let's break down the procedure into some smaller steps. The first thing you need to do to use the coper is to make a template of the baseboard you are using. The coper works on all makes and models of baseboard up to six inches in height. In this first step, making the template, it's the longest step in using the coper, but you usually only need to do it once for each project. To make a template, you take a one inch piece of the baseboard you are using and wax the bottom half of it. You take that baseboard and clamp it in the molding tray so that the top of it is against the stop of the tray. You then take another one inch piece of baseboard and cut a small piece off the bottom of it, maybe three quarters of an inch. You place this behind the other piece in the tray to act as a relief block. You don't need to clamp the relief block into place. The space the relief block creates in the template allows the router to start cutting at the bottom edge of the baseboard. It gives the router bit some room. With the tray ready, you measure 30 milliliters of part A and 30 milliliters of part B of your poracast chemical. Make sure you get the measurements correct. Pour both of the chemicals into the mixing cup and gently stir the chemicals for about 20 to 30 seconds. Stirring too fast lets oxygen into the mixture and weakens it. It can also create bubbles that you really don't want. You may feel the cup getting warm in your hand as the chemicals react together. When you first mix the chemicals together, the mixture becomes cloudy. When you stir it for the 20 seconds, it becomes clear again. So, once it's mixed completely, you immediately pour the chemical into the tray and wait. After about two minutes, you'll watch with amazement as the chemical turns white and hardens. 
After about five minutes, you can take it out of the tray if you want to make another mold. But leave the baseboard attached to the template until it is totally cured. If you pull off the baseboard early, the template might shrink. Once the template has completely cooled and hardened, you can pop out the baseboard and relief block. The speed of this step is largely determined by the temperature and humidity in the room you are in. It usually takes about 15 minutes. But we recommend that you leave the template overnight so that it cures completely. Now you have a template of the baseboard for your project. The Coper uses a quarter inch router bit to make its cut. It's a carbide tipped bit that we had made especially for the Coper. Since we want all the detail in your cut, it's important that the bit fits into all the nooks and crannies of a piece of baseboard. To ensure you get a good cut, take the router bit and run it along the edge of the template and you will quickly be able to see if there are any problem areas on the template. Now 95% of all baseboard will be fine. Most detail on the baseboard is small grooves and those tiny grooves turn into points on the template and so the cut is not a problem. But if you're unlucky enough to have a spot on your template where the bit doesn't fit, simply take a quarter inch round file, it's included in your kit, and lightly sand that spot until the bit fits into it. Now make sure you sand lightly. It will only take a few passes with the file. Again, this rarely happens, but we wanted you to know this so that if you ever face this problem, you'll know how to solve it. Now that your template is finely tuned, it's time to get the coper ready for cutting. You take the template and screw it down into place in the coper using the two screws and the nuts in the slots underneath the coper. Some carpenters will tape those nuts into place or use a soldering iron to melt the plastic around it so they don't keep falling out. We think that tape works great. Now, take a piece of baseboard and slide it into the coper so that it is about a quarter inch over the edge of the template. You may need to adjust the template so that when you look at the baseboard you can see that the top and bottom edges of it line up exactly with the template. Once you have adjusted the template, you can firmly tighten it into place. Now you're almost ready to make your first cut. With the template in place and the coper properly assembled, you're one step away from making your first cut. When you install baseboard in a room using the coping method, you always start with a piece of baseboard that has straight edges on both sides. You simply cut it to length and install it. It's the next piece of baseboard that requires the coped edge and that's right where the coper helps out. You take the piece of baseboard that needs the coped edge and you place it about a quarter inch over the edge of the template. You then adjust the clamp heights, you obviously only have to do that the first time you use them, and lock them both down into place. Each clamp places about 500 pounds of pressure on the baseboard, so the piece you are working on isn't going anywhere. You will probably notice during this step that the surface of the coper is angled about a half inch over the length of the unit. This angle provides a back cut on the edge of the baseboard so that it fits well even in corners that are not perfectly square. Now you're ready to make your first cut. Everything that you need to use the coper is included in the kit with the exception of the router or laminate trimmer. For this video, I'll assume you're using a router. Take the quarter inch flush trim bit out of your kit and place it into your router and tighten it firmly into place. Adjust the height of the bit so that the bearing at the bottom of it runs smoothly along the edge of the template. Make sure you fully understand how to use your router and always wear safety glasses when using it. Place the router onto the coper and when you are ready, start the router and make your cut. Make sure that you let the router do the work in the cut. Push gently against the template and don't force your cut. By letting the router do the work, you'll get a perfect cut every time and you will at minimum double the life of your router bit and extend the life of your template. Once the cut is made, leave the router on the coper until it has completely stopped. Most carpenters will simply leave it there until their next cut. Loosen the clamps, and now you have a baseboard with a perfectly coped edge on it. It will take you a few cuts to find out how to smoothly run the router along the template, but when you get a feel for it, you'll have great cuts in just a few seconds. Now this piece of baseboard is ready to go. Cut it to length and install it. 
From this point on, all you need to do to every baseboard is clamp it and cut it, clamp it and cut it. The speed of this process will save you a huge amount of time and should help you maintain consistency and quality in your work. Now that you understand how the coper works, it's time to let the coper start cutting corners for you. On our website, we have a full listing of tips and frequently asked questions. But here are a few tips we want to give you right from the start. When you made your template, you used a piece of wood as a relief block. In actuality, the relief block is only needed on baseboard that has a square edge on the top of it. If it has a rounded edge, you can simply put the molding in the tray so that the bottom of it is against the stop and the rounded edge is down. Since the edge is rounded, the router will be able to make the first cut without relief. Our next tip is on the preferred way to install baseboard. Some carpenters like to go around the room in a clockwise motion, while some prefer to go around in a counterclockwise motion. If you're a carpenter who likes to go around the room in a clockwise motion, make the mold so that the bottom of the baseboard is against the stop in the molding tray. You need relief then to match the top edge of the baseboard if it's square. Again, if it's round, you don't need relief here. If you prefer to go around the room in a counterclockwise motion, place the baseboard in the tray so that the top of it is against the stop in the molding tray. And then you'll need relief here to match the bottom of the baseboard, which is always square because it sits on the ground. One way allows you to go left to right, the other right to left. It's simply a matter of preference. Now that's an important point to understand, because sometimes when you're working with oak or other hardwood, the top little piece of baseboard wants to chip off. To avoid that, you simply go around the room in a clockwise motion, so that each cut you make starts with the top of the baseboard, and then you never get that chipping. You always want to cut hardwood from the top. If you're using oak, go clockwise around the room. Our next tip involves the small piece of weather stripping you have in your kit, and maybe you're wondering what it's for. You can use that weather stripping in small pieces in corners where the taper hasn't taped all the way to the bottom of the wall, or the compressed edge of the baseboard allows the bottom edge of your corner to fall away. Stick a little piece of that foam weather stripping behind the baseboard where it's needed, and it will keep your corners tight forever. It's just weather stripping. You can get it at any hardware store. Maybe you use something else and that's fine too. But we find that weather stripping is a wonderful solution to this very common problem. Another tip we'd like to share may be one that you never use, but we still want you to know about it. If you ever need a template of a certain type of baseboard that you want to use over and over again, job after job, here's a way to make a long-lasting template. The first thing you do is make a template of the, in the normal fashion and install it in the coper. Then you can take a six inch strip of plexiglass and clamp it into place where you normally clamp the baseboard. Your first cut will create a new template in the plexiglass. It's your first cut, it's a fresh cut, and it will be an exact replica of your template. Take it out, cut it down to two inches, drill a few holes in it, and now you have a template that will last forever. One final tip, if you ever need more back cut in a corner, Put a thin piece of wood under the front of the baseboard and clamp it down. This raises up your baseboard slightly and should give you plenty of back cut. If you have any other questions, please check our detailed instructions and frequently asked questions on our website. There are some great tips there for most of the problems you may face in installing baseboard. Like any tool, you'll need to find out the best way to use the coper for you. If, after checking our website, you still have some questions, please email us or give us a call because we want to make sure that the coper cuts corners for you. Everything that you need to use the coper is included in your kit. All you need to provide is a router or a laminate trimmer. In your kit, you will receive the coper, the toggle clamps, your molding tray, 300 milliliters of Part A and 300 milliliters of Part B of the Poracast chemical system, You'll get mixing cups, measuring cups, the wax, stir sticks. You also receive the quarter inch flush trim router bit, the quarter inch file, the weather stripping, and all the hardware that you need to assemble your coper. You can also purchase extra pour cast kits, router bits, and baseboard backing from us 
or ideally from the retailers that carry our products. Thanks for watching our videos. We hope that you find the Coper to be a valuable finishing tool for many years to come. We want the Coper to cut corners for you.